In this video, we are going to use Photoshop's blending modes to combine all these images you can see right here and create this awesome looking effect. Plus, we are going to make it look even better with some final adjustments. As always, I will be showing the whole editing process from start to finish. So if you're just here for the tutorial part, make sure to check the chapters of the video. Otherwise, you can find the raw file to follow along in the description of the video. And now let's begin. And this will be our base image. Then we have all these other images for the car light traits, which we want to combine with the base image later on. But first, as always, we need to do the basic raw adjustments. And I'm just focusing on our main image right here. This will just be the base for everything. So right away, I'm going to change the profile to Adobe Standard just to lessen the overall contrast. And this gives me more control over the contrast. Then let's expand our lights panel. Whenever I combine car light trails with a base image, I want to make sure the base image is a little bit darker, even a bit too dark for a normal image. So I'm going to start this by bringing down the exposure. And you can already see I'm going to drop it quite a bit, but this will just help make those lights stand out a lot more later on. Although it might seem weird at first, this totally makes sense. Next up, I'm going to slightly bring up the shadows so we don't lose any vital details in the darkest parts of the image. And I'm also going to bring up the blacks for the same effect. I do think we are still lacking a little bit of contrast, so to fix that, I'm going to bring up the whites. This will also help making the image look a bit brighter again, but I think we do have a good balance with the exposure at the moment. So that's looking great. One thing we can notice after these tonal adjustments is the image looks super, super cold. Now, usually I would be okay with that, but since we are going to add some color trails in the foreground, I also want this whole image to be a little bit warmer, especially in the sky. So we can open up the color tab and here we can adjust the white balance. I'm going to bring up the temperature, which will reduce the blue color cast and make everything look warm. As you can see, I'm going to raise it a lot, which is not something I usually do, but for this image, it's perfect. I'm not going to change the tint. I think the tint looks good so far, but what I'm going to do is to add a bit of vibrance, maybe like this. I'm also going to bring up the saturation just to give those colors some more punch, and that's looking good. Then let's also go through the effects tab real quick. I wanna bring up the texture, making the shot look a bit sharper, I'm also going to bring up the clarity and at the same time, I'm going to bring down the dehaze, applying some kind of soft look overall. And I think there we have the base image. Let's compare to before real quick. You can see it's much darker and we do have less of a blue color cast. So that's looking really, really good. Now I want to target one area in particular, which I want to change a lot, which is the sky. I want to have some kind of sunset tones in there which work well together with the car light traits later on in the foreground. Therefore, we need masking. So let's open up the masking panel. And I would say let's start with a simple sky selection. Looking at the overlay, you can see this sky mask is far from perfect, but it should be fine for what I'm going to do next. I'm simply going to push up the contrast, making the sky just look a bit cooler this way. I'm also going to bring up the highlights just to make the brightest parts of the sky even brighter. So basically increasing the contrast in the sky. I'm going to drop the shadows again, just for the contrast. Then let's also increase the clarity, making the clouds pop a little more. So like this. And I think I'm going to bring up the whites further pushing the contrast. So far, it's looking quite good, but we are missing those sunset colors. What we can do for that, we can work with the white balance slider. So I'm going to bring up the temperature a little bit. And I'm also going to bring up the tint. Still, the sunset colors are not there yet. That's because I only want the bottom of the sky to have these sunset colors, not the top. So I need to make more masks to achieve that effect. So next up, let me create another sky selection. This time, I want to only affect the top part of it. So I'm going to subtract a linear gradient, taking out everything from the bottom. And I want to make the top part a little bit darker. So let's bring down the exposure. So that's looking awesome. I'm also going to bring down the temperature in this case, because I want the darker part of the sky to be colder. So I'm going to drop it quite a lot. This will help 
achieving some very nice color contrast later on. Then we can do the opposite. So let me start with another sky selection. And with this sky selection, we're going to target the bottom part. So I'm subtracting another linear gradient, this time taking out everything from the top, targeting only those very bright areas. I want the brighter areas to feel warmer. So that's a perfect mask here. So in here, I'm going to further push the whites, just making these bright areas brighter. And then let me bring up the temperature, introducing sunset colors. Mm, let's go with something like this. We can also push the saturation to make these colors a little more obvious, but slowly we are getting there. That's looking much better already. Now with the next mask, I want to specifically target the highlights in the sky. So how can we do that? Create a new mask. This time we're choosing a luminance range mask. With the eyedrop active, I'm clicking right here in the brightest part of the sky, just like this. Let me activate the overlay. And right away, you can see we are selecting way more than the sky, obviously. So we have to change that. We need to intersect this mask. Therefore, click on those three dots, choose intersect mask with, and choose select sky. So that's looking much better. However, I still need to adjust the luminance range because we're targeting parts of these darker clouds. So I want to only affect the brightest parts. That means I'm going to take this point for the blacks and I'm going to push it further up. This way I'm filtering out more of these darker tones from the sky. I could even use this point and bring it up a little bit like that. Okay. And just to make sure we're targeting the right areas, I'm going to once more subtract the linear gradient and I'm going to take away part apart from the top. And one more thing, I wanna subtract an objects mask. Make sure to use the rectangle select mode. And with that, I'm going to draw a rectangle around all these mountains because I don't want the snow to look warm. So here we have a pretty good looking mask. Now it's time to introduce heavier sunset colors. Again, we want to do that using the white balance slider. I'm going to pump up temperature all the way up. I'm also going to pump up the saturation. And I want to use this color box right here, adding a specific color tone to this area of the sky. So I want to set up the hue to something in the red color range. And I'm going to bring up the saturation some more. So that's looking great. And I would say that's it for the sky. Now I also want to work on the landscape for a second. So let me create one more sky mask. I'm just going to invert this mask to create a selection for the landscape. And I'm going to bring up the contrast just a little bit. I'm also going to bring up the whites, which will especially make the snowy patches brighter. And let me bring down the temperature, making all of that landscape a little bit colder, which again helps to create some nice color contrast. And I'm going to bring down the saturation a bit because I don't want the landscape to be that vibrant. Okay, that's looking great. Let me show you this image without masks and with masks applied. So especially in the sky, you can see it's looking much, much better. We can go over the color grading real quick before we can start with the cool stuff. So let's head out of the masking panel and we want to go ahead, open up the color mixer. I want to work on the hue for a moment. What I want to do is to bring up the green hue because that hill on the right side looks a bit too yellowish. I'm also going to drop the blue hue, which just gives the sky a really nice color tone in my opinion. That's it for the hue. Let's head over into the saturation tab. I want to bring up the orange tones, which will mainly affect the sky. Same goes for the yellow tones. And I'm going to bring down the green tones for that mountain on the right side. And let's bring up the blue tones as well. Beautiful. We can also check out the luminance tab for a second. I can bring up the yellow luminance, just making the sky a little brighter. And let's maybe even raise the blue luminance a bit. Okay, then we do have the split toning in the color grading panel. We can further enhance those sunset colors. So let's start with the highlights, which should be mainly covered in those sunset tones. So I'm going to set up the hue again. I'm using a warmer color tone and I'm just pumping up the saturation to have this nice effect up in the sky. Then for the color contrast, I'm going to use the mid tones and the shadows. For both, I'm going to apply a cold color tone somewhere in that range. Let's slightly bring up the saturation. I don't want to overdo it, but something like this looks pretty good. Let's do the same for the shadows, set up the hue and bring up the saturation a bit. 
Okay. If you want, you could also use the global color wheel. I think I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to set up the hue to a warm color tone and just very gently bring up the saturation here. I think that looks much, much better. Okay, let me deactivate the split toning for a second to see the difference from before to after. And you can see this helps quite a bit. Now, one more thing in regards of the color grading. Of course, I'm going to head down into the calibration tab, which I always do for my images because I just love this effect. I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue. This will nicely shift the blue colors and the warmer colors in the image. And I'm going to pump up the saturation once more. All right, beautiful. So that's it for the raw adjustments for our base image. Now, what about the car light trail images? Here, it's mainly about the car light trails. We can ignore everything else. And what we can see at the moment, these car light trails are kind of looking a bit too cold. I want to make them look warmer, so they are fitting better with the sunset colors of the sky of our base image. So what I need to do in here is to go into the color tab and I'm going to bring up the temperature. I'm going to raise it a lot actually, so I think that's looking pretty good. I might want to bring up the vibrance a bit and the saturation just to make those look a little more colorful and we can make these a bit brighter by bringing up the whites. Just make sure to not go too bright, otherwise we're losing details in those bright areas because they are clipping. We could bring up the shadows a little bit just need to make sure the road itself doesn't become brighter than it is in our base image. Let's see, maybe bring up the exposure as well, but I think that's looking fine. Now we need to copy these settings to all the other car light trail images. I'm going to hold down the shift key, select the last one in the film strip down below, right click, synchronize settings, make sure to check all, and hit OK. And now with all the raw adjustments for all these images done, we can open them up in Photoshop. I'm going to select all of them and just click open. So here we have our base image. I know there are better ways to do that, but that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy over all those car light rail images. So with the first one, I'm going to hit Ctrl A, which will select everything. Then I'm hitting Ctrl C to copy the selection go to the base image and hit Ctrl V and you can see the image being inserted into our layer panel right here above our base image. And that's just what I do with all the other images. All right, here we have all images stacked on top of each other. Now we need to work with blending modes. First off, let's deactivate all those car light trail images. Then select the first one. We can activate this one, go into the blending modes and here we can choose lighten or screen or color dodge depending on what you want. I want to go with lighten. Everything looks nicely merged but once I deactivate this layer you can see there are areas that don't belong in the final image, especially up there in the sky. We need to mask them out. The way I do it is I'm going to create a black layer mask on the first car light trail layer. Therefore I'm holding down the alt key while clicking on the layer mask icon down here. Then I'm going to grab the brush by pressing B set the foreground color to white and with the brush I'm now just painting over the road right here revealing the car light trail. Just like that. Okay, beautiful. And that's how we can merge all those layers. So again, let's go to the second one. Activate it, change the blending mode to lighten, add a black layer mask and again brush over the road revealing all those lights. And I just keep doing the same thing for all remaining layers. And just like that, we have merged everything. That shirt is looking so much better thanks to these car light trails. But we can further enhance this image. Let me group all the car light trail layers. I'm selecting all of them and let me click on that folder icon. This way, the layers panel is nicely cleaned up. Now we can make them a little bit brighter. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and here I'm choosing curves. I want this curves layer to only affect the color trails below it, not the base image. So I'm holding down the alt key and click right between those two to create a clipping layer. So everything I do to those curves will only be applied to the car light trails. So I want to make these highlights brighter. I'm going to pick the highlights point and I'm going to drag it a little further to the left side. 
could also play around with the contrast. Let's create another point and drag it down a bit. And this way we can give our car lights more punch and make them pop a little more. But what about some extra glow? We can do that as well. Create a new layer. Again, we're making use of blending modes. So on that new layer, go into the blending modes menu and choose hard light. Then grab the brush by pressing B. Make sure the opacity of the brush is set to something around 10% to keep this effect subtle. And make sure to pick a color from the car light trails something in the red color range as you can see right here and now I'm just going to brush over a few areas to add a little bit of glow on certain parts and that's how we can use blending modes to give our images this really cool looking special effect let me know what you think about this technique if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments I will gladly answer them if you want to support this channel make sure to like comment and subscribe and thank you so much for watching this video.